part of the Rich Eruption. I'm Jared Ware. Much like Novak Djokovic last night, I'm going to run through Dan today. 6 2, 6 2, 6 1, straight sets. Part of the Rich Eruption, I'm Dan Chad. Simpler times. Simpler times is right there. It's our hashtag today. As always, if you want to get involved on the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to do, hashtag it up, simpler times. We're working on a strict deadline today for the first time since season one. Let's get uh, right into it. Let's see how long that lasts. Graphics are coming. The graphics are coming. We'll, we'll, we'll just kick off our first topic right yep. here. Uh, the AFC Championship game was last Sunday. Yep. Wasn't the result we were really looking for. Yep. What do you take away from the game? Oh, well, I, I think the, the big sentiment coming out of the game is we got out physical against a physical defense. And uh, our offense was just awful that game. Let's just be honest. I thought the defense at times was poor. As soon as Tariq went out, they struggled. But coming into that game, you kind of expected the defense to struggle in general. You didn't expect the offense to struggle the way they did. Uh, a couple mistakes. And, you know, the Ridley fumble, not much you can do about that. Like and you that, said, if, if yeah, somebody gets knocked gets unconscious, unconscious, there's nothing it's going to be can, a fumble. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. You're going to lose possession of it. You lose control of your body. Uh, mismanagement at the end of the first half of the clock. So i, I got to say you got to put a lot of blame on the offense, McDaniels, Brady, all those guys. That's where most of the blame goes for me. All right. Well, you know, I just I didn't feel good about the game uh, at halftime. 13-7 yeah. lead, and the Patriots could have had at least a 16-7 yeah. to seven lead, 17-7. to seven. So they didn't take advantage there. Second half comes along. The offense is just awful. Like you said, Tariq goes out. Yeah. You had to throw Marquise Cole in there. So Flacco's just throwing it up. Bolden's coming down with it. Cole's getting burned. Yeah. Steven Gregory was not there. Kyle Aronson had to play. Like, uh, it was just, it was just a poor performance from the defense. But I mean, the Ravens, you know, I'm, they took advantage. I mean, no Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. No Julian Edelman, which you didn't really need to yeah. notice. Uh, and then, I mean, after that, no Tariq, did what you got to do, throw it to Bolden. So yeah. Flacco just looks great. Weird, though, that we didn't get a Super Bowl this year with a quarterback matchup as Joe Flacco versus Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Not, none of, this yep. is the first Super Bowl in years that we haven't seen a, a prolific passer uh, in well, the Super Bowl. I, that, that's what I feel like. Yeah, I mean, not, I mean, against two guys that you wouldn't say – like top five quarterbacks, but Kaepernick is probably not that far off. I would oh, say he's it, probably top fifteen, and with another season, he could yeah. be inside the top ten. I I would rather have him than Flacco going into this game, yeah. but that's another issue for another day. Another thing I want to say about Ravens and pe- uh, Patriots is just I'm sick of throwing picks. Yeah, no, I, I really hate the Ravens defense more than anything. Paul, uh, Pollard, Lewis, oh, uh, Lewis Pollard. pointed it out it's before the game, crying. Who, you're an idiot. Next topic. We might get to that later. So, we also saw before that game, Niners go into the Dirty Birds house, get it done in Atlanta. They're going to the Super Bowl as well. Uh, what are your, what's your takeaway from that My takeaway from that game is just Matt Ryan just must be getting hammered right now. The guy, first half, you couldn't have been much better. Yep. Three touchdowns, guy had like 280 yards passing in just the first half. So, coming out in the second half, you're like, all right, what is this Niners defense going to do to stop Matt Ryan? It's the Matt Ryan show. Turns out, Matt Ryan stunk it up in the second half, dropped a snap, Threw a pick, which really turned the yeah. tide, yep. and uh, he just couldn't get it done. So when that happens, a team like the 49ers, you really just saw that a better team won the game. I mean, 49ers also, they missed a kick, lost yep. the ball on the one-yard line, yep. still won the game. They could have won the game, who knows, by double digits. Yeah, we saw Atlanta dominated that first half, and then the 49ers came out and really just beat them off the field in the second half. Defensively, they played great. They got some help, obviously, from Ryan, as you said, the fumble snap. The interception, but the offense was just tearing through that Falcons defense. Niners could have scored another, you know, 13 points probably in that game. David Akers has got to get his act together going into Super yeah. Bowl Sunday because, yeah. you know, it's the Super Bowl. May come down to that left leg, and you'd like to have some confidence in it, but right now, yeah. not a lot. Uh, and here, the, the thing about this Niners win for me, too, we, we heard about the read option all week. We heard about it all week. Didn't really get much off of that with Ka- uh, Kaepernick keeping it. Didn't really have that big of, big of an effect in the running game for that offense. So I think that's a good sign that they can go and play a tough team, beat them without him running all over the place because the Ravens have two weeks to kind of drill themselves against that read option. So I don't think it's going to be that effective in the Super Bowl. So uh, I think it's nice to see that Kaepernick with his arm and giving it to Frank Gore because you sell Frank Gore and the Michael James who are two pretty nice running backs. Gore's great. James Gore, is a nice change of pace. Gore's really good. He got fined. Did you see he's wearing his socks? Yeah. He was. Did yeah. anybody notice that? No, uh, he got fined $10,500 for that. Every time James came in the game, five, seven yards apiece. So you have a nice change of pace. One's physical between the tackles runner. One's more speed and agility. So 
I really like where the Niners are. Good wins, good comeback wins, showed some character. Randy Moss should win his third Super Bowl yep. with the Niners. How about that? that Randy be, Moss. That would be weird. On to topic number three. Okay, so we got the Niners and we got the Ravens. Unfortunately, it's not the Patriots, but we got some storylines that the media is just all about right now. What is your least favorite storyline heading into Super Bowl Forty Seven? I think it's got to be the brothers in the Super Bowl and then uh, their family getting, you know, the, their dad and their mom and all these people. And obviously, you think the dad's going to be out there for the coin flip? People are going to talk. Mr. Harbaugh. People are going to talk about coin. Tom Crean and how he's the great coach at Indiana and he's their brother-in-law and they're such a great Ooh. coaching family. And who cares? They're, these two guys are whiners, the most annoying coaches in the league. Jim nearly pooped his pants after uh, that catch, Harry Douglas catch. Which Matt, wasn't another really a catch. thing from Matt Ryan: if he just hit Harry Douglas oh, anywhere, that's a touchdown, anywhere, yeah. that's a touchdown. Yeah, that wasn't but a catch. That's Harbaugh loses his mind and just acts like a complete child. I hate the two of them. I don't. I think obviously Jim's a good coach. I mean, he came in from college two years. Now they're in the Super Bowl, which yeah. is impressive. They've oh, been yeah. in the NFC Championship. They, they were for two stingy years. as can be before so, he got there. You have to give him credit. He's a great coach. He's super annoying. I hate the Harbaugh Har, or Harbaugh Super Bowl. Sick of it already. Super it's been two, two days. Yeah, I mean, imagine how many uh, clipboards Jim Harbaugh would break Go if he was a basketball coach. Yeah. So my least favorite storyline. That's a good one, but I'm going to go with the Ray Lewis retirement party. I yeah. mean, we've, we've seen it for the whole month of January now. It's like, oh, this was last home game against the Colts. Yeah. Goes out, dances after the game. Then next week, all right, might be his last game against the Broncos. We really thought it was going to, and it should have been, but the Broncos can't play defense but one play, so you know what happens. Last week, you know, comes back in the Fox Bowl, rivalry game. It could be Ray Lewis's last game. Cries during the National oh, Anthem. Yeah. Nope. So oh. now we get this ho hum. Let's send him to the Super Bowl retirement party. Plus, we got Media Week next week, which is yep. just a complete blowing out of awful. the waters. Let's get Ray Lewis going, sort of deal. Uh, so, plus ESPN signed him like two hours after he said he's not gonna he's gonna retire. So, are you gonna have Ray Lewis on ESPN for the next ten years? I guarantee you'll be on Monday uh, Sunday morning countdown. Yeah, and that'll with be all awful. those guys, they'll add like they'll add like their thirteenth guy to the panel. Yeah, they got so many guys there. It's like Terrible. it's getting it's getting so out of this world. Like I just I don't even like that show, no. especially with Chris Berman hosting. Oh, Terrible. anyways, anyways, uh, so yeah, that's my least favorite storyline. Uh, my friend pointed this out, and I I'm gonna throw him a shout out. My friend Mark, great point. Imagine if Ray Lewis takes the final snap, just a knee. At the Super Bowl, like if yeah. the Ravens had just run out the clock, instead of yeah. Joe Flacco going out there, they get Ray Lewis getting a knee. Yeah. He said that I could not believe it. He'll I probably be, I would be cracking up. He'll be at the very very back of that victory formation. Yeah. Moving on. Okay, warehouse. So we saw, we we see comeback stories all the time, yeah. and we see that a comeback might be in the making. So Marcus yeah. Russell, former number one pick, you think he's going to be back in the NFL someday? No, I, I, he was awful when he was in the NFL. Uh, he's got a huge arm. Mm, that's about it. Overweight. Huge lack, arm, huge belly. Lack of lack of work ethic. All the stuff you don't want from your quarterback. Pretty much for Marcus Russell had it, other than the fact that he could throw a ball, you know, like 70, probably 75 yards in the air. He was just all right when he was at LSU. Probably actually underachieved at LSU when you look at the talent that they get on this team. A couple of years they were a 2-3 loss team, which LSU should probably never lose more than two games. Let's just be honest. Even in the SEC, great great recruits all the time. So, if I'm a GM looking at Jamarcus Russell, I'm not touching him with a 10-foot pole. And I would say the only team stupid enough to re-sign would be Oakland. But he's already been there and failed. So maybe Cincinnati exactly. s- says, hey, we'll, we'll take him. We take a bunch of misfits. Cincinnati happens to make the playoffs now. And yeah. But, Dalton, but Dalton's great. I mean, Dalton's good enough. I yeah, mean, he yeah. struggled in the playoffs. So. Uh, yeah. There's no way that Jamarcus Russell's going to be coming back into the NFL. I yeah. mean, we saw that Antoine Walker tried to come back to the NBA. He had, like, sort of the same issues, just overweight. Was, like, he was older, but Marcus Russell turned out really, really quick. Um, uh, Vince Young's still out there. Vince Young is a similar yeah. quarterback. Like, Vince Young actually has been to the playoffs. Yep. He's won games in the NFL. Jamarcus Russell pretty much showed up at camp 300 pounds and didn't do anything. So there's no way Jamarcus Russell's going to have a comeback. If he wants to, he's probably going to have to go to the Arena League, play a couple years there, go up to Canada, play a couple years in Canada, and then maybe he gets in a backup role with an NFL team. This is like five or six years yeah. down the road right here. And then maybe he gets a chance because a quarterback gets hurt to come in and play like two games. And then if he plays well in those two games, maybe he gets like one half a season yeah. out of it. So we're looking at like seven years from now, Jamarcus Russell 
to be playing like eight games in the NFL. There's no way that's gonna happen. That yeah. just only that's just only way. Yeah, he'll be in his thirties by then too, so he'll have no impact even if he does come back. But more power to him for trying, I guess. Okay. What's your take on Manti Teo? We heard this story the last few weeks breaking that his girlfriend, who allegedly died the same day as his grandmother, didn't exist. You know, it's just. I don't know what to, I don't know what to take. I don't know yeah. who to believe. I guess I guess now it's coming out that Monty was hoaxed. Yeah. But still, it's like, ah, uh, he developed a relationship with a girl for years on the internet. Yeah. I don't know how trustworthy those can be, especially this. Like yeah. He he claimed to talk to her. He claimed that he was sleeping with his phone on when she was in leukemia treatment. Like, ah, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. It, plus. You know, this is really gonna hurt his draft status. I think he was he, his draft status was already hurt in that uh, national championship game, but now it's gonna go even further down because teams are gonna be like, "Yo, what, what's going on now?" It's gonna go a little bit down, but not not as far as if he was really really lying about yeah. it. it. There's still stuff that's gonna come out about this story. Daily daily stuff comes yeah. out, and out of everybody he chooses to do an interview with, Katie Couric. Yeah. That's the one person I probably don't want to see you do an interview with. Pretty good, though. You're going to do a sports person, like Jeremy Shaq. Well, Lance Armstrong was more of an Oprah. But Oprah was hitting him with some tough He did questions. do it with Jeremy Shaq, but not on camera. Yeah, he did yeah, it yeah. With Jeremy Shaq. Jeremy Shaq. Um, ESPN. Um, my take, he probably might be one of just the dumbest people. He's pretty stupid. Like, all right, so you're talking to this girl online for three years. Never seen her before. Probably shouldn't say she's your girlfriend. That's that's yeah. rule number one. If you haven't seen or physically talked to your girl, not your girlfriend. That that will never happen. Let's <laughs> let's all get smart here for for a second. Second off, second off, he found out allegedly he did find out and did like kept lying about it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if he was trying to just you know he, he didn't want to lose Heisman voters or he just didn't want to embarrass himself. But you, this was this was going to come out eventually. You had to know that yeah. as soon as you figured oh, yeah. it out. Oh yeah. This was going to come out and. Just to keep lying like that, keep then all of a sudden you kind of put yourself in a situation where people are saying, "Well, were you in on it? Did you do this?" So you oh, he looks awful. An Absolutely terrible. Aspect. So it was probably would have been better just to come out and say, "Yeah, this happened. I look like an idiot, but it happens to a bunch of people. Uh, I'll be smarter the next time I'm using the internet. I'll be smarter the next time in a relationship." But and you know, people are gonna this make guy, fun of me. This guy, like he, he had to have known she was like not real. Because yeah. This guy is the hero of the Notre Dame campus. Yeah. Almost any girl on campus yeah. would just, like, fall into his arms, like, no questions asked, pretend to know nothing about him. So, you, you say you had yeah. a three-year relationship on the internet when you yeah. could have any girl on the Notre Dame campus? I, I just don't get it. And remember I said this guy should be the uh, sportsman of the year? Yes. What an, a fool I look like yeah. now. Well, yeah. I, a nominee, not the yeah, sportsman, yeah. just a nominee. Thankfully, I picked two viable choices in Mr. May and Terry Walsh, and I don't look like a complete nut. Yeah. All right, Warehouse, so another story that came out last week, Lance Armstrong. What do you think about Lance? I think we, we touched upon Lance um, a few episodes ago. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we have touched on it. Now he's just a fraud. And now it's tough and uh, because it becomes, you know, he lied about the steroid use. How does that affect the Livestrong situation? And you have to say the Livestrong stuff is great, great to, um, philanthropy there by him. Starting that foundation, raising all that money for cancer awareness and, and, and helping uh, cancer patients, that's great. And you can look at that side of Lance and say, that's good. But the overriding thing he's known for is being a great cyclist, uh, her heroic comeback, and it, it's a fraud. And everyone else was was juicing and, and, by, and cycling. It happens all the time. So in that sense, I don't really mind. But to continue to come out and say, no, I, I never did it, I never did it. Call people, say other people his are whole lying team, about it. His whole team has been yeah. convicted. Like, yeah, to say, to say, to come out and say other people are lying about me being a juicer. I would rather just have a guy just not say anything, like most baseball players do, and fine with that. But to come out and uh, accuse people of lying, yeah, yeah, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's hard to look back in those clips when he's like, I feel bad for you who don't believe that we're doing this clean, and yeah. then it's like, buddy, you've been doping the whole time, so. Cycling's a tough sport. Everyone dopes. Everyone gets addicted yeah. to everything. I don't know why you do it. You yeah. have to bike 100 miles a day. Nobody cares too much about you. You're not that popular. And then when you have allegations against you, that's when you really become popular and everyone hates you. So I don't get cycling. Uh, professional cycling, at least. Uh, I like the I like the uh, Vel Velodrome cycling. Yeah. I don't know if they dope as much. Yeah, I don't they know. They don't have either. brakes on those bikes. Didn't know that. Yeah. That's why they, they ride around like 10 more laps after they do the one lap that they yeah. actually have to do. 
Uh, yeah, very funny. Also, why the coach has to go out and hold them until yeah. the whistle yeah, starts. Yeah. So that's yeah, they don't have breaks then. Yeah. Let's go. Um, but yeah, Lance Armstrong, Live Strong, cool stuff. I mean, everyone's like backing out of that now, like Sporting Kansas City doesn't want their stadium to be named yeah. Live Strong Kansas City Park, Live Strong Sporting Park. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lance, you know, it's just you know, it was the SC Awards. Do you watch the SCs? I no. don't. I don't really care about them too much. But the athlete of the year in the whole like decade of the 2000s it was Lance Armstrong, Barry Bonds, Tiger Woods. Yeah. All these guys have been alle- like allegations against them. So it's just like, if you want to be like, a Tiger, he- if Tiger you Woods want stuff. to look for a hero, don't go to the sporting world. The Tiger Woods stuff isn't. At least that's not like cheating to get better. Well, his you know? his his uh, doctor had been accused of going on steroids. Again, hearsay, I guess at this point. Aussie Open's been going on. We're into the second week. We're closing in on the finals. We have one final set in the women's side. Victoria Azarenka, Lee Na going at it. We have one semifinalist in the men's game. Novak Djokovic last night handled his business against Sabi Ferrer. Tonight, Federer, Andy Murray for that final spot. So what are your predictions here as we come towards the end of the Australian Open? Um, what I got about the Australian Open is, first off, I just want to say, U.S. men's tennis, Awful. really, really, really Awful. terrible. Awful. Terrible. Terrible. But in the men's side, you know the, the – surprise, surprise. The top four seeds made the semifinals. Obviously, David Ferrer is going to yep. lose. But Djokovic, he's going in against Federer or Murray. Murray has Federer's number now, so I'm going to go Murray in that one. So it's going to set up a final between Murray and Djokovic. And I think Djokovic is going to win. He's, he's yep. the, the king of the Australian Open right now. I think this will be his third straight. Yeah, this will be his third straight. He's fourth, got, his, he's got his, his parents in the corner. Yep. In his box. Yep. And uh, also his girlfriend. Yep. He's probably got wife. I think he might have actually got married. I think she might be his wife now. All right. Anyway, she's a beautiful woman. Yep. And thankfully, it's going to be Chris Fowler on the call, not Brent Musburger. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Andy Murray has a has a good looking girl. Yeah, uh, I think he does. Good looking girlfriend in his box. She's too, always so. in her. She's always in his box too. She's not as like like vocal and debaucherous as um, Novak's like girlfriend is always on her feet. Yeah, like, I'm, I think Djok- Djokovic's parents rub it off on him. Yeah. Because they're they're real vocal. They'll yeah. stand up for anything. So, yeah, I'm going to go Djokovic over Murray on the men's side, and then on the women's side, you know, I, it's really a toss-up. Lena, Victoria Azarenka, got to throw a shout-out to Sloane Stevens for making yeah. the semifinals, yeah. and my bold prediction of 2013 has just been wiped out because Serena Williams is not going to com- complete the Serena slam. Yep. So, on the women's side, it's really a toss-up because uh, – I didn't see the Azarenka match, but I heard she took a timeout. Yeah, I heard that too. I didn't watch her match. It was on a. Anyways, screen. I'm gonna take Azarenka. She's got red poo in her box. Yeah. Uh, men's side, obviously tonight, Federer Murray. I'm taking Murray because Murray in the quarterfinals only had to play three sets and pretty much handled Cardi. It was a 6-3, 6-3, easy routine win. Federer had to play five sets against Sanga. Pretty tough match. So because of that. Federer's age and the fact that Murray's been playing great tennis for the last well, probably about a year now. He's been playing pretty good tennis. I'll pick Murray to get into that final. Uh, in that final, Djokovic Murray. Last time Murray beat him, Djokovic loves he loves Australia. Loves As you it. said, it's going to be his third straight title if he gets it done. But I'm going to go Murray gets it done. Two straight titles for Murray, and he kind of emerges as the next guy who is going to start winning a bunch of sl- not a bunch of slams. He'll probably win like five or six in his career, which is still a lot. But when you compare it to uh, like Federer, Federer and Nadal, Nadal and, and all that. They are, they're they in double digits. So, But five or six career slams is still pretty great. Women's side, I'm going to go Lee Na because she's been in this Australian Open final before. Lost. I think she's going to get it done this time. Uh, also, I, I'm going the Bryan Bros winning the men's doubles. They're in the finals. I don't know who they're playing, but they're the number one seed, and they're the Bryan Bros. Yeah, they all going to win. Next topic. All right, so do you agree or disagree with MLS blocking Breck Chase transfer to Stoke City? Uh, the teams, FC Dallas, Stoke City, agreed on a fee. I think it was like in the like $3 million, And MLS, they have to ratify, although Sears said, no, that's not enough. So it looks like uh, Shea is staying at FC Dallas for at least another six months. Okay, yeah, I think um, I thought he was going to get a little bit more on the transfer fee money side. It's going to hurt a lot. That's yeah, why. maybe maybe $3.5, 4000000 million. Regardless, I'm not a fan of whenever MLS blocks any players. We saw it before with Revolution players. Bowman got blocked. He was yep. trying to go over to Europe. Sorry, Joseph got blocked. Turns out this guy's in the MLS for his whole career. Yep. So I'm not a fan of it because this is this is where he's in the prime of his career right yep. now. He can get better. He's yep. still like 24, maybe. I think 23. he might be, he might be more like 22. 20, or 22, 22 uh, He's still young. Yep. And to go over there into England, we've seen Jeff Cameron made a name for himself at yep. Stoke City. Yep. 
So I think it would have been a great move for Brett Shea. Uh, he's been really down on the national team side right now. Yeah. Like, it's tough for him to get some some uh, some playing time because he's he had playing time, but he didn't really play too well with it. Yep. So if he goes to Stoke, puts a name out for himself, yep. he's starting in the World Cup. Now he's got a whole other year, yep. and it's going to be tough for him to make that World Cup team. But, yeah, I, I just – got to send him over – yeah. Send him over to Europe. Yeah, it, I don't like MLS blocking a move like this, especially team uh, a move like this, which will, in the end, should help the U.S. men's national team, which is where the MLS should really be focused. They're never going to be a great league in the world. We talked about this. So send some of your young American talents overseas so they can get better. You know, two po- or three million, that's a pretty good deal. That's enough for FC Dallas. If they're okay with it, the league should be fine yeah. with it. Who cares? And And as you said, was in the U- uh, was in the national team picture and then has fallen out. Hasn't pl- really played well. Really struggled this year. Injuries picked up a few stupid red cards and was out for games. So didn't have. A, he was an MVP, almost MVP of the MLS, I believe, two years ago. This year, not that good. So I think he goes over to Stoke, plays well, gets better, helps the U.S. men's national team. The only good thing is we do see. It looks like Graham Zusi. He's got a pretty much lock-in starting spot on the national team. He plays at Sporting KC, so it doesn't really kill him. That he stays in MLS, he could still earn his way back into the into the spot into the roster spot. But he would get exponentially better in Europe, and that's what we want. We don't want just want guys to make roster spots. We want guys who are going to be dangerous in World Cup international matches. Yeah, but you don't want to see him not get any any playing time in in England, and then yeah. have to go to Turkey like yeah. Maurice Edu has yeah. to do right now, who is at Chelsea. Yep. Okay, so the next topic warehouse. The Winter X Games are starting today. Obviously, they're in the Colorado city of Aspen. They haven't moved. In yeah, probably like eight years from Mount yeah. Snow in Vermont. Uh, so, what do you like better? Do you like Summer X or you like Winter X? I like Winter X better. Summer X, it's in the summer. I don't really want to stay inside and, and watch the Summer X as much as I'd like to stay inside Winter X. As we know now, it's like one degree outside, oh, less than freezing. one with the wind chill. It's awful. Might as well. I'm going to be inside at 9 o'clock at night anyways because outside that's probably like negative 10 at that time of night. Not doing anything. Sit inside, watch some Winter X. Usually do some cool stuff. You get Sean White on the super pipe, which is always great to watch. The super pipe competition in general, always great to watch. So I'm going to go Winter X. I'm right there with you, Warehouse. And I, I'm a big fan of the Winter X games. Yeah. Summer X games, I don't care about skateboarding. Yeah. I don't care about the off-road racing. Yeah. I don't care about anything, really. I mean, I used to go to the Gravity Games when they were in Providence. Do you know the Summer X games first city was in Providence? I thought it was Newport. It, Providence and Newport, like the sailing. I think they did like sailing or something. Yeah. Those were in Newport, but Providence, yeah, 1995 or 1996. I was too young then. But dirt bike races, don't care about it. But in the Winter X Games, you get sports that are in the, in the Winter Olympics. Yep. So you get a preview two weeks before the Winter Olympics are going to start next year, not this year. Yep. But still this year, you know, you get a little preview. Super Pipe, like you said, good. That's an Olympic sport. Uh, Snowboarder X, yep. Skier X, those yep. are Olympic sports. Yep. Now in the next Olympics, you're going to get uh, Slope Style for snowboarders and skiers. Yep. Those are both win- uh, Winter X Games and Winter Olympic sports. So it's just it's just a cool thing yeah. to – I don't ski or snowboard yeah, or do any, anything of the sort. But you know what they should do is just nah, – never mind, never mind. They should. I was going to say they should get, like, all the winter sports from the Winter Olympics just for the X Games every year. Get that way at one time. Yeah. You can't do skiing. You can't do – Like figure ice skating hockey. and stuff. Hey, yeah, figure skating isn't it's quite not extreme. extreme. <laughs> it's not extreme at all. Oh, they do do some crazy stuff on the figure skating. Uh, yeah, races. yeah. Figure skating, probably, if we did the Winter Olympic PTR, it would probably be my least favorite Winter Olympic okay. sport. Lower than bobsled. Okay. All right, our last topic. Last topic of the night, Warehouse. We thought the Patriots might be able to get it done this yep. year, but they did not. So, with the last Boston Championship, the 2011 Boston Bruins, in the grand scheme of things, not bad that your last championship was a year and a half ago, but... Yep. We're Boston sports fans. We're spoiled. We want our teams to win. When is the next team going to win in Boston? Not going to be the Red Sox anytime soon. Let's be honest there. C's getting old. They're not going to win it this year. If they don't win it this year, they're not winning it anytime soon because they're going to have to rebuild. There's two teams out of the way. So right now for me, it's either going to be the Pats or it's going to be the Bruins. Interesting hockey season, short condensed season. I don't know who's going to – I have absolutely no idea who's the favorite in the NHL, but we saw last year the eight seed won it. So I think there's a little more parity in the NHL, so I'm going to say it's not going to be the Bruins. The Pats, if they have a good off season, make one or two, maybe three good moves, improve the defense, especially the secondary a little more, maybe find some a, a few more consistent weapons on offense, maybe a running back who doesn't fumble all the time, 
couple receivers who are actually athletic and can run after the catch. They could win the Super Bowl next year, and we've seen the Pats in the Super Bowl last year, AFC Championship game. So I'm going to go Pats sooner than, I'm not going to say next year, but I'm going to say before the Bruins. But again, the Pats clock, I'm going to say two seasons. If they don't win in the next two seasons, again, they're going to have to rebuild, and it's going to be like seven years. So I'll go Pats, Bruins right behind them. Okay, I'm going, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it too much, but the Red Sox aren't going to win this year. They're not yeah. going to win next year. No. The Celtics, I've been saying it, they're not going to win for another 15 years. They're, and it's proven this season that they're that awful. Yeah. Bruins, on the other hand, they have a good team. But the playoffs and the hockey, they're such a toss-up, I yeah. can't decide yep. who's going to win. Yep. So I'm going Patriots, not next year. Patriots two years from now. Brady's going to be like 37 then. He's yep. going to be an old guy. That's his last Super ride. Super Bowl 49. I don't, be, I don't know what city it's in. Yeah, neither do I. So I can't tell you that. I know next year is in New York City, yep. but Patriots, the 2014 New England Patriots will be the next Boston sports team to win the title. I, I'm probably right there. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Shoot it, maybe next year. You know, could it, do could it, happen next year. it could happen next year. But you think you'd have to have a good off season and a good draft, and like Chandler Jones would have to get continue to get better. Yeah. And well, Hightower the thing have with the Patriots that's good is is the AFC East blows. Yeah, they're in the playoffs. So they're getting like 12 wins a year. Yep. So that that's twelve wins a year, right? That gets you into the divisional round. Win a game there, you know. Denver will you, be worse next chance, year. There's a good chance that you host the AFC Championship game. Denver will probably be worse next year. Baltimore will probably be worse next year. Yeah. Steelers, you never know with them. Cincinnati is just all right. Texans are choke artists. So yeah, the AFC, AFC in general it, it's very winnable. It, it like, goes through New England. The Colts could be like the second best team in the AFC East next year. Ooh. Could be. It's, Young it's, teams, it's possible. Everyone, everyone loves gets them. better. Who knows? It, yeah. Who does know? Um. So. Happy time. Time to get happy. Happy 24th birthday to my sister, Steph. Hi, Steph. Happy birthday. I hope you enjoy your birthday present and your birthday card. And also, we got to say thanks to Sam Allen, Mocha Tolich, Bell DeLamba, Tom Lima, and Brian Christie. I don't think that's her name. But <laughs> I, I, I got is, it. Is that it? Is that? It's not? Really? That's all I wrote down. Oh, all right. Come on. I, got, I, all right, all right. I wrote all the names down. All right. Skip you later. See you guys later.